Hello guys, uh, I'm back to uh, Light Wolf Shamanic Healing Channel. We're going to go ahead and do the Libromancy reading for next week. Uh, that would be the week of February 12th, starting Monday, February 12th. Alright, so I did not do the Libromancy, so we're going to do it like I didn't do it on Wednesday like I normally do. It's been an incredibly busy week. I actually wrote the three newspaper stories already for the local newspaper. It's crazy. Um, I love it, though, because it turns out I'm a writer. I mean, I've been writing for years, but I never wrote professionally. And now, all of a sudden, I'm writing semi-professionally. Um, so, anyway, let's go ahead and... The cat. Okay, I got the cat. I had a cat sitting behind me. <clears throat> I got a cat there, and I got a cat here. I'm surrounded by cats. You guys don't even know. Uh, I love them. They're my babies. Okay. So anyway, so uh, uh, Spirit Guide me in these books. <coughs> <coughs> and let me just say, today's been weird. So I don't know what the astrology is, but it's a, a weird Mercury retrograde-like day. Like I tried to record an interview <coughs> on the phone. It usually works fine. Come out with an M4A that doesn't work. <coughs> a couple other things, all technical related. The devil's trying to choke me right now. You know, stuff like that. Okay, so I'm gonna let Spirit. <coughs> uh, thank you, Spirit, for surrounding us with love and light, protecting us from those who do us harm, and guiding us on our path for a greater good. Please guide me. Um, in your great wisdom to the first passage that is going to help people uh, in the following week uh, thank you we love you and so it is blessed be I call on the compassionate helping spirits to surround us with a circle of love and light protect us from any undue influence that would try to corrupt the message and here we go <coughs> Okay, so the first book is the Holy Quran, the Muslim book, the Muslim Bible. I've never read this. Um, this is what spirits guide me to. Okay. Here. Okay. Show me again. Here. Yeah. Okay. Now, which page? This page. I know which word. This word. Houses? <clears throat> okay. And which word should I read to? Ignorance? It, you don't want me to go down here to the apostle? No? Okay. Okay, so this is what uh, Spirit is having me read. <clears throat> so we're on page 302 of the Quran. It's translated by John Meadows uh, Rodwell. Rodwell. And it says, Houses, and go not in public decked as in the days of your former ignorance. Okay, cool. So we've got that. <clears throat> the houses. Well, let's talk about that a little bit, because I'm probably not going to remember if I try to go back to that. Houses, to me, instantly, I don't see, like, people in their homes. I see, like, the, the, the houses of the zodiac of your astrology. Um... Believe, if I remember correctly, the eighth house is where your troubles are, and like your chronic illnesses and your job issues and stuff like that, and health, definitely health and death issues. Yep, that's what they're showing me. Um, health issues uh, go not in public, decked as in the days of your former ignorance. So, in other words, don't go into public flashing and flaunting and pimping and whatever and trying to look all fancy <clears throat> now that you're starting to become enlightened dress nice but don't you're not trying to impress anybody you're not trying to win an award for best dressed right you dress nice because it makes you feel good not because you're trying to impress somebody that's what they're trying to say here okay Okay. Really? You're not even going to have me shuffle? Okay. 
So the next book is one of my favorites. It's called uh, Gate of Worlds by Robert Silverberg. Never read any other books by Robert Silverberg, but uh, as you will learn in my book, my forthcoming book, uh, which will be my first published book, called Confessions of a Talented and Gifted Dropout. When I was in Talented and Gifted uh, program for highly intelligent children, uh, this was, they basically let us, what do they call it today, charter schools? I think they call them charter schools today. And that's basically what Talented and Gifted class was. Okay, kids, you're all super smart. Go ahead and figure out what, what you want to do with your day. You know, they let us plan our own day and stuff within certain guidelines. And one of the classes we went to, and we just like read college level books at age nine for an hour. And this was one of the books I grabbed. And I loved this book so much, I had to find it. It's, you know, it's out of print, Gate of Worlds. I'll just tell you, just in general, what it's about is a, it's kind of a, probably one of the first alternative history books. And, you know, that's a big thing now and has been for about 20 or 30 years. And it says, okay, uh, it's written as if the uh, conquistadors had never come over and conquered the Aztecs. So as so it's 1980s and the Aztecs run everything, you know, and cars aren't big like they, they would have been. They're more like these little uh, Indian you know, these little Indian uh, little motorcycle taxi things that have like sort of a car shell built around it, one of those deals. Um, and then their favorite drink is uh, Mexican chocolate. And it's like cocoa, cinnamon, and uh, hot peppers or something mixed with milk. It's, I tried it one time, it's so good. So anyway, all right, spirit here. Wow, that's quick. Okay. And words. Okay. And show me to where. Julius Caesar. Okay. So here's the passage that we'll be reading. This one in Gate of Worlds is on page 177. It says, Words left her in a rush. In truth, I am no student of literature, but what Englishman is there who has not been exposed to his dose of Shakespeare? I said, yes, of course. I've seen Shakespeare. I've seen Julius Caesar. Who is Julius Caesar? Julius Caesar is emperor. He's the guy that was seen by bad guys, a lot of guys, a lot of people, and seen as a savior, as a good guy who's going to change things and make things better by just about as many people. Um, <clears throat> this is Donald Trump. And, you know, I'm not trying to bring politics into it. That's just what they're showing me. They're showing me this is Trump. There's about mixed feelings, 50-50 on either side. of he, Either he's helping us or he's hurting us. That's what, that's what the, is in the air that the people feel. And what this is saying, guide me a little bit, Spear. Can you clarify? Okay, so they're saying Trump is a savior, but he's not your savior. He is doing good things that will see, that may seem as bad things, but in the end they will turn out and prove good. There you go. And I say, I don't watch news, so I don't even know if he's doing something. <clears throat> I just heard something. Uh, on another spiritual channel about some spaceship got launched so uh, spaceman or spaceman x or something i haven't looked into it in great detail because i've been so busy <clears throat> i might write about that for next week so that's julius caesar but what englishman has not been exposed to it so it's like if you're in America or the world today, you know about Trump, you've heard what he's doing, etc., and you've got an opinion one way or another. But the words left her in a rush. Don't be so quick to blurt out what you're thinking. Wow, this is kind of like the message from weeks ago. Don't be in such a rush. 
slow down, evaluate your thoughts, and ask yourself, why do I think this? Is it tradition? Is it because somebody else thought this and they passed that thought thinking on to me? Or do I actually have a rational reason to think this? And if I think my reason is rational, can I demonstrate it as rational and logical? <clears throat> it's interesting that spirit is instructing me to tell you guys about logic. <laughs> uh, and there we go. That's the end of that one. Wow. <clears throat> spirit is just saying, just go in order. So, okay. This book is Orange is the New Black uh, by Piper Kerman, a memoir. This was a, based on her time uh, as a, a white middle-class woman in prison. Um, they made a TV show loosely based on it that's got good ratings. I liked the first season, and then I didn't watch it again. Um, but I actually met Piper Kerman. And this is an autographed copy, so she seemed pretty cool. So, Spirit, go ahead and leave me right there. Okay. Really? Okay, we're going to do some bottom stuff now. All right. Don't. In here. All right, so we're on page 207 of Orange is the New Black. Don't stick that picture there. What are you, stupid? Put it over here. What is that telling me? Well, what is a picture? A picture is something that you have that captures a memory, an event, something that happened in your life. So with a, with a photo, or your life or somebody else's life, um, with a photo, you're holding on to a memory. And they're saying, don't stick that here. Spirit is showing me, okay, clarify. Okay, this is weird. Spirit is saying, don't stick the memory in your heart. Put it in your mind. And then can you clarify more? I'm seeing color brown. This is base. This is earth. This is put your feet on the ground and ground to the earth. Let your negative energy return to the earth. All energy returns to the earth and to the cosmos. Bring in positive energy from above through your seventh chakra, your crown chakra, which is right here. As you breathe in, imagine a white light tinged with gold coming in right here and as you inhale it's like a it's like a vacuum it's vacuuming down white light from God creator of the universe to heal you and to bring you enlightenment Okay, I don't know what that had to do with the passage. That's what they told me. Finally, we have Julio Tsuka's The Buddha in the Attic. This is a really interesting book. Um, I saw this, or I, we actually had to read this as part of American Studies class at Portland State University. Um, it was a good book. So, what is it about? It's less about anything to do with an attic and more, the attic is metaphorical. It's actually like, the attic is like the history of the early 20th century in America. And the Buddha represents the stories and the wisdom of Asians, how they got here, mostly uh, like Japanese because the Chinese people were already here building railroads and stuff but this is mostly about Japanese um, though there are there is some stuff about Chinese and I think other Asians as well 
and it's just a, a bunch of little vignettes. Um, you know, Asians were farmers when they came here. A lot of Asian women thought they basically had a sugar daddy in the United States, married this, you know, uh, what's it called, a uh, uh, mail order bride, and they would marry this guy that they thought he was a rich farmer, and they would get there and then find out that they're expected to not only be the wife, but they're also expected to be a farmer and be out in the fields. And they got all these nice dresses and stuff, and they thought they were going to be rich, and then they realized, nope, they were tricked. And some of you can see that as, you know, the way it's kind of presented in here is, oh, those poor girls, they were tricked. But some of you can probably also see it as, well, that's kind of what greed gets you, you know, that kind of thing. Then we can go back and forth and say, well, is that really greed or is that just wanting to better oneself? And I think the answer to that lies in what's the intention and are you willing to sacrifice other people and hurt them to get what you want? I think if you're willing to sacrifice and hurt other people to get what you want, then you probably can call it greed. If you do your best to ensure that everybody is fulfilled along the way as you're getting yours, then that's abundance and prosperity. So anyway, okay, Spirit has led me to this page. We're on the left side. Wow, big time. They want me to really emphasize this word. I hope it's a word. Standing too close. Okay, and you want me to go to smiled. Okay, right underneath it. All right, so this is page 52 of the Buddha in the Attic. It says, standing too close, please excuse, we said to them, and then we smiled. So what does that say? Standing too close, please excuse, and then we smiled. Well, a couple things. If you're standing too close to something, you can hardly see what's going on around you. But if you move back further, you get a wider perspective. So if you look at more and detach yourself, I mean, it's hard to detach for most people, even me. Uh, but if you try to put yourself in a third party and say, well, how would somebody who isn't me with my feelings and emotions look at this? You know, like maybe an alien or a robot. This is what we mean when we say detachment. You remove yourself as the person who's being acted on or who is acting, and you, you observe yourself in the moment being outside yourself. I know that probably sounds weird, but a lot of you will understand exactly what I mean, and this is for you. Too close, right? They say, okay, excuse me. And then we smiled. So that's, we, real, uh, we realize that we're too close to the issue. So we need to pull back. Maybe apologize. That's what they're saying. Some of us may need to apologize because we're too close to the issue. And when we pull back, we'll see uh, the error in our thinking or what have you. Apologize. And then smile. And when we smile, what we're doing... It depends. But in this case, what Spirit is telling me is the smile indicates is showing your willingness to mm, cooperate, but that's not quite the right word. Clarify? Okay, they're saying co cohabitate, coexist, co operate in the true sense of people those who cooperate are people who operate together they do an operation together what's an operation like a project 
it's like a, a something with a finite uh, length or whatever. So when you cooperate on something, you are both kind of in a dance. Like let's say it's you and one other person, at least one other person. You're you're in a dance. Whoever you're cooperating with, whatever you're cooperating with, you're in a dance. You're in a choreography. And if you are not cooperating, you will be the one that looks goofy. Uh, how do I put this? Like imagine you're you're on stage and you're in like a chorus dance or something. If everybody or a line dance, if everybody's turning left but you turn right, you're going to be out of sync, aren't you? You're going to be out of step. Uh, that's what they're talking about. Cooperate. See all sides of the story. Wow, this is a really important thing they keep trying to tell you guys. I don't know why. It's like um, something in the world right now, people aren't cooperating and they need to is kind of what's, what's being shown. Oh, okay. Uh, why didn't I get this? Okay, it's about fighting war or combative stances or something. And it's about not trying to fight each other and instead standing back and appreciating everybody's point of view because if you give it a chance to sink in, what you'll come to realize is the root thought and the root concept, especially with like, let's say, religion and spiritual beliefs, the root concept that you believe in is what everybody else believes in. They're just calling it something different. And God says he doesn't care what you call him. You call him the master of the universe. You call him Sheila. You call him the Lord. You call him Jesus. You call him Muhammad. Of course, he's not Muhammad, but uh, you call him Buddha. You call him Krishna, Vishnu, any of these. God doesn't care. What he cares about is that you love one another and that you treat one another with respect and that most of all, you don't harm his people. Does that mean the Jews? I am being told no. We are his people. The earthlings are his people. Hold on. each other we are not to harm each other if we're harmed by crazies then we can reply in self-defense but for the most part we are not to harm each other physically no, you know no murdering or stabbing or cutting off of limbs and this kind of thing uh, that's it I guess that's the end of the message. Okay. Well, thank you guys for joining me. You know the deal. You know, like and subscribe. I don't even know if anybody's fucking watching this at all. So if you think this is funny or interesting or stupid, pass it on to your friends because, uh, you know, I may be spiritual, but I still understand the value of free publicity. So love and blessings. Everybody have a great weekend. Uh, blessed be.